Hello, this is Two Ladies Midwest Adventures. I'm Julietta, and the drama happening in the background is Jenny um, losing a battle in a game. I'm reading The Days of the Martyrs, and we're on chapter two finally. These chapters are long. We must obey God and not men. The church, of, the church in Israel. Most of the thousands of Christian believers who, in the first of three centuries after the coming of Christ, sealed their commitment to their Lord with their blood. <sighs> were, like our fictitions, Quintus, victims of the Roman government. During the first three decades of the church's existence, however, the primary instigators of persecution were not the Romans but the leaders of the Jewish nation. Oh, I don't know that. And again, I can see that. Let's see. For all the existing documents, the fact that for the first 30 years of the church's existence, one would have been hard to put to locate a Rome official who knew that Would, one would have been hard to put to locate a Roman official who knew what a Christian was. The celebrated North African Christian writer Tertullian C-150 C-140 believed that Tiberius Tiberius <sighs> during whose reign Christ was crucified read the reports of Jesus' life and miracles, and even consider asking the Senate to enroll him among the gods of Rome. If Tertullian was in receipt of a accurate information, it meant only that the Emperor Tiberius was a cruel, suspicious man in his 70s, was sufficiently impressed by Jesus' reputation to toy with the nation of making him one of the hundreds of gods whom it was permissible for. He put the empire to worship. If they so chose, <sighs> such an idea was, at most, only in a passing fancy. As no such decree was ever promulgated. Promulgated. Certainly none of the emperors or high officials in the first century had the slightest idea of what Christianity was all about. And for the next book, I might actually read The Lives of the Twelve Caesars, because, well, I guess this is, book here is talking about the Roman Empire, so why not? Some individuals may have regarded the founder as a rebel, others as a good teacher, perhaps even as a holy man worthy of religious devotion. But few, if any, residents of the Roman Empire had any understanding whatsoever. <sighs> of the main points of Christian teaching. Uh, sorry for all the yawning. We were going, we were to go back in time and interview the emperor. Were we, were we, oh jeez, were we able to go back in time and interview the emperor Caligula, who governed the Roman world violently and incompassionately from 37 to 41? during the time that the faith was making its first inroads in the empire. Who? His response would likely have been who? Oh, you mean the Na Nazarenes or Nazarites or something like that. Their leader was put to death in the region of my predecessor. They say he was a magician who worked miracles. 
they were right to kill because you never know what men like that are liable to do. It is always best to kill. But the Christians, why, they're just a seat of those dead Jews. None of them are loyal Romans. They think they are too good for our gods. I'm going to teach all of those jokers a thing or two when I get good and ready. This roughly would probably have been the attitude of also Caligula's successor, the more moderate and balanced Claudius, who I, who reigned until 54, if Christians encountered any hostility on the part of the Romans in these years, it's because of their identification as Jews, Judaism was one of the recognized religions of the Roman Empire. It was not confined to Palestine. They had adherents and converts throughout the empire. Jews were allowed to worship in their magnificent temple in Jerusalem and hold services in their synagogues. It's windy. Signosis doesn't look right. Um, throughout the Roman world, they were allowed to make converts, and their men, and their men, because of their religious scruples, were exempt from service in the imperial army. As long as the Roman government saw succession of the followers of Jesus because of their religion. Any violence inflicted on Christians by the Roman state was the cause of political rather than religious activities on the part of the group which was which they were associated. The Romans tolerated the Jewish religion, but rather grudgingly. As we will see in the next chapter, although Romans were not religious people, at least from a Jewish or Christian standpoint, they were superstitious and believed that unless the guardian spirits of the Roman state were appeased with sacrifice, the Roman world was threatened with disaster. Though Jews were allowed to satisfy their obligation to appease the gods of Rome simply by praying for the interior, emperor in their temple. There were many Romans who felt that toleration of such atheism was dangerous and could have serious repercussions if Rome tutelary spirits should get riled up over the lack of attention shown them by an increasingly large percentage of their client population. However, the considerable violence used by Romans against the Jews during these years was intensely for political rather than religious reasons. Since Palestine had been absorbed into the Roman Empire in 63 BC, Jews had barely resented Roman rule. And almost every year in hundreds that passed between Jerusalem's occupation by Pompey, or the great crucifixion of Christ, and that the great crucifixion of Christ had seen some of the act of rebellion or terrorism. Thus, when leaders of the Jewish nation condemned Jesus to death and asked Pontius Pilate, the Roman prosecutor, to carry out the sentence, they implied that he was a revolutionist, as had Jesus had been such. Pilate would have been only too glad to comply with their request. To have him crucified. When it became apparent to Pilate that Jesus was no revolutionary, that his kingdom is not of this world, he wanted to free the controversial rabbit and was persuaded not to do so only when a riot threatened to break out. Had such disaster occurred, Pilate could easily have been accused of incompetence and 
recalled. So, like millions of other bureaucrats, to the present day, he crumbled other over, under the pressure to save his job. In AD 33, the year when our Lord was crucified and rose from the dead, Jerusalem was a city in the Roman province of Judah. It was not the capital. The center of the government had been removed many years before to Caesarea, where the Roman officials and troops, Roman authority in Judah was. In AD 33, the year when our Lord was crucified and rose from the dead, Jerusalem was a city in the Roman province of Judah. It was not the capital. The center of the government had been removed many years before, it seems. Where the largely non Jewish population were considered better hosts for Roman officials and troops. Roman authority in Judah was in. The person of the imperial appointee called a prosecutor, who was normally subject to the governor of Judah. And the prosecutor. Oh, pro procurator. Okay, procurator. Had charge mainly of financial and military matters. The local government was under control of the high priest. And a subway of 70 men. I know it as Sanhedrin, a body with both judicial and legislative authority. He could sense a man to sense a man to death. Wait. Yeah, he could send a man to death, but could not carry out the sentence. They could only recommend the prosecutor procurator that the sentence be carried out, and the Sanhedrin was composed of members of the high priest family or chiefs of the priests, lay leaders known as the elders, and canon lawyers known as the scribes. Many of the latter belonged to the sket called the Pharisee, who were concerned with the strict observance of the law of Moses and believed in a spiritual world, in the existence of angels and demons, and in rewards and punishments beyond the grave. Most of the chief priests and elders, on the other hand, were members of a sect known as the Sabbaths, who failed to mentally deny the existence of a spiritual world and possibly of a life beyond the grave, beyond. The Sandrin opposed Jesus and his followers on both spiritual and political grounds. The Pharisees were generally the most favorable to Christian teaching. Two of them, Joseph and Arimatha and Nicodemus, were Christians. The famed rapid. Galilee, universally respected, took a moderate position. Other crazy however, like Saul of Tarsus, later known as Paul, whom some scholars believe was then a member of Sandrin, who were busy, bitterly opposed to Jesus because he claimed to be God. For opposed Jews, this was an ultimate blasphemy, punishable by death. Alright, we're almost at 15 minutes stop it here so I don't get carried away. Okay. There we go. Like and subscribe so we can get to 1,000 subscribers to play beekeeping. Uh, make the world a better place one person on one moment at a time. Jenny, say hi. Hello. Yay. Bye-bye. Like and subscribe so we can get to 1,000 subscribers so we can start beekeeping. Thank <laughs> you.